Will you chill? Sit down. Lay down. Down. Lay down. Lay down, please. Mom's trying to fill. Thank you. Baby, show me. Welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about willpower and some things I really want you to consider as you are trying to make progress, not trying, as you are making progress through your fitness journey. So the main topic of this video is willpower but I also want you to consider how it impacts us over the day. So the average American makes 35,000 decisions a day. 35,000, that's a lot of choices. And in reality, we go through three phases when we go through there. We go through the pre-action phase. So like your forethought, what are you thinking about before you do it? You do the action, and then you go through the post-action phase and reflection of how things go. So, for example, maybe you have your cup of coffee and you have your salad, and then you get to dinner and you didn't plan ahead, and you ate everything you could inside, so you did your pre-thought, and you thought, man, I'm hungry. This looks good. Action. You ate everything. And then the last phase, you went through and went, man, I feel really bad because I didn't make good choices that fueled my body and now I feel gross. Maybe you need to consider some ways that you can help yourself out so that way you don't have that happen to you in the long term. I want you to just think about this. So let's define what willpower is and de decision fatigue because I feel like these two topics are really intertwined. So willpower has several different names. It's commonly can be called determination, drive, resolve, self-discipline, or self-control. And its main definitions are control exerted to do something or retain, restrain impulses, the ability to delay gratification, resisting short-term temptations in order to meet long-term goals, the capacity to override unwanted thought, feeling, or impulse, the ability to employ a cool cognitive system of behavior rather than a hot emotional system AKA pre, uh, it's your definition of, of, what is the freaking word? It's reactive in, um, I can't think of what it is, but it's where you're, you, you plan ahead before you do something. I'll think of it and I'll put it on the screen. Okay. Conscious effort regulation of the self by the self and a limited resource of capable of being depleted. That is the last point I really want you to think about. A lot of people think, that willpower is the main resource that they need in order to make their health and wellness journey a reality. One thing that I really want to counter with that is that there's a lot more that goes into it than willpower. Yes, you're gonna have to have beginning motivation and things of that sort, but you're also going to have to set yourself up with discipline and habits in order to, to have that to fall back on when your motivation goes. Because I hate to break it to you, you are not always going to have the motivation to go to the gym, to eat well, whatever the case may be. I'm, it's just the reality of things. We are human and we're not perfect and we need to be okay with that. But also we need to plan ahead so that way we can have better results in the long term. This is what brings me to decision fatigue because I feel like decision fatigue is correlated to willpower and that we have this willpower that helps us make good decisions over the long term, but as we get more tired and fatigued throughout the day, we're gonna have less and less like resources in that reservoir of willpower to help us make better and better choices. This is where I think you really need to consider a few things to help you make better choices in the long run, especially as you get more tired throughout the day. So let's think about some things that you can do to help you make better choices even when you're tired. Number one, plan as many decisions the night before so that way you can make good decisions throughout the day. Pack your lunch, kind of have an idea of what you're going to eat. Make sure you have your workout clothes already set out. Make sure you know what workout you're going to do. Maybe you already have your, your calendar or your outline for the day already done so that way you know when you're going to, to the gym and you have an accountability partner for you. The next thing that you should consider is doing the most important thing first. 
So if you have something that you know is going to take a lot of mental capacity or physical capacity, you always want to do those things first so that way you don't get throughout the day and you go, man, I'm tired, I don't want to do this. So if at all possible and it works for your schedule, I know, I'm sorry. Because um, we just can't nap like these babies can all the time. So if at all possible, try to do the most important things first. Not try, do the most important things first so that way they get done and you're also going to feel like a like recharge because you got those things accomplished. Okay. The next tip I have for you is stop making decisions and start making commitments, which is why if you've watched my last several videos, you've noticed that I've tried to reword myself when I am not making affirmative statements. I am I am not making them become commitments become a lie. So when I say that I'm trying, that is not a commitment. I am going to do this by this date. So a commitments really need a timeline, a date, and a deadline. So that's how you know when something is a commitment. So how can you start making commitments rather than just decisions? Because making a decision is great, but you also have to start taking action on those things. And you're probably going to have to have less willpower because you made a choice. You can always change your mind again and change your direction if you need to later because we sometimes we find out things don't work. But make a darn choice and then make a commitment to your choice and then start taking actions toward it. The next tip I have for you is if you have to make a, a decision later in the day, make sure you eat, make sure you're not freaking upset or, or, or angry as hell. Okay, because if you're one of those three things, you're more likely to make a really bad decision. So if you need to eat, meditate, reduce your amount of stress, go work out, and also make sure you're not angry when you make those decisions. Because you, end up, you may end up making a decision that you don't agree with later on. So try, not try, work to make the best situation for yourself as you need to make those decisions, especially if it's something that requires you to make the best decision possible like buying a house, buying a car, having a kid, whatever the case may be, getting a dog, uh, getting divorced, whatever the case may be, make sure you're in the most sound mental state possible before you make that kind of choice because a lot of the time those affect your life entirely for a very, very, very long time. Next thing I want you to consider, simplify your life. We make things so freaking complex around here that we make things super complicated. So I recommend trying to simplify your life as much as possible. Get rid of stuff. Reduce the amount of things you need to do. Delegate. Say no more. Make your family and your kids and whatever else have responsibility for their own actions, which also means you may have to step up and hold them accountable to it, but they're more likely to do what you need to do. And that's also going to help you hold yourself accountable as well. But simplify your life in as much as possible, which is also back to changing one habit at a time as you go through your health and wellness journey. If you try to take on the entire World War III by yourself, it's gonna be very difficult when in reality, if you only have to worry about one battlefield and one battalion to worry about on that battlefield, it's gonna make it so much easier versus trying to win the war with one small battalion when you need a whole army. Okay, next tip, done is better than perfect. I am a perfectionist. Many of you know this about me. If you don't, I am a perfectionist and this is something I've had to work on for a very, 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 very long time. So you are more likely to see something with grammatical errors and my words are all twisted up and things of that sort because I've realized that it's more important for me to have things done rather than perfect and share that message with you guys. And also that if it needed to be perfect, that would have been set in the stipulations. And also, you can always make adjustments later. A lot of time when we have something done, you can always go back through and make any adjustments or edits and things that you need. So don't focus on it being perfect. Focus on it being done and make adjustments later if you need to. The next tip I have for you is remove distractions or yourself from situations if at all possible. So if you are in a situation or have a variety of distractions, try to eliminate those if at all possible try to improve your situation if at all possible. So if you're in a situation that makes you incredibly uncomfortable, leave. Okay, there's always, always, always a choice. If there's a number of distractions, eliminate them as much as possible. For my people that have children, I completely understand you cannot eliminate the child. 
but what you can do is plan to take advantage of the times that they're either asleep or they're playing or maybe you can practice maybe helping them color whatever the case may be and then you can color and slash work together so it may try a couple things it may not always work and it may not work at all but try several things until you find something that works for you I had a friend in college, she had her baby. She took her baby with her to CrossFit class. She would row and she'd lift, but the baby carrier would be out of the way, but nearby so the baby could see her as she was working out. So one, the baby was happy because it was with mom, but two, mom was taking care of mom and having me time as well. And occasionally when her husband was not at work, he would take the baby so mom could have me time as well. So that's just an extreme example of me time, but also helping with distractions. But maybe there's you haven't considered all the ways in order to accomplish your goals, or maybe you have not considered actually asking for help. So that way you can do that. Maybe you can trade off with a friend or somebody to help you babysit your dogs, or your kids, whatever the case may be. Because where there's a will, there is a way and you will figure it out and you are worth investing in yourself and taking care of yourself. Next thing, keep your options list short. A lot of time people have too many options and then we can't make a decision. So if at all possible, keep your options list short and try to make sure it fits specific criteria, which will help keep your options very short. So when we were picking a gym, we needed something that had powerlifting material that was within a reasonable distance, that didn't cost a fortune, that had a good atmosphere, that had a variety of equipment, and was within a reasonable distance to AJ's job. That eliminated a plethora of places. So when we did find our home gym, it helped us be helped us find it because we had a very short list of options because we had these criteria. Also, sometimes just picking A or B is sometimes really simple. So keep everything short. My last tip for you in this, especially when we have decision fatigue or if you're having stressful willpower, do you have a routine set for yourself? A lot of people have a routine, but it's not really a routine. It's just something that I do, they're not very mindful of it. So maybe you need to actually make a routine for yourself to get up at a specific time, to take time for you, eat your breakfast, so that way you're not grabbing everything you need and rushing out the door. Maybe you need to have a weekend routine to take care of your house and yourself and prepare for the next week. Maybe you need to have a routine for your animals or your children or your house or your nighttime routine so that way you can unwind and actually sleep. So these are all things that I want you to consider and when you're having decision fatigue or stressful situations. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this is a little bit long, but I just really wanted to stress several things to you and I want you to consider all these things. Let me know what you liked most. Let me know what tip you liked the most. Comment below. Be sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss any more. And there will be more videos coming to you very soon. I am fixing to start a series and I'm so excited. So until then, bye-bye.